Hi everybody, it's Michael. I'm coming back with another video for you this week. This one is called, I Would Never, or Would I? The case for breaking small, tricky, or awkward room decorating rules. So this one is great because it is all the things that I would typically never do in rooms, like putting furniture in doorways, bringing in lots of big bulky furniture in rooms, painting rooms really dark colors. These are things that sometimes people really want in rooms for different designs, and it's kind of tricky in smaller rooms because they can make the room feel cramped or crowded or, you know, very um, just, you know, uncomfortable a lot of times if you don't do things the right way. So this is actually a roundup video and a blog post together with uh, information that I found from other great designers online that have done some fantastic work when it came to, you know, designing these tricky or awkward spaces that I'm going to be talking about today. So if you have a room like this or a space that you're looking to outfit with some bigger furniture, some bulkier furniture, darker colors on walls and things like that, this is the post for you. So stick around and we'll be right back. Okay, so the first thing that we're gonna talk about for this particular video is gonna be, number one, the case for, for angled furniture in small rooms. So basically when you have furniture that's angled in small rooms, a lot of times it cuts off the flow to the, to the room. It cuts off the pathways, everything's in the way, it's not a great situation. <clears throat> but I found this one designer who is called Tweak Your Space. Now, I thought that this was a really fantastic website. This was a great article. I'm going to link all of these articles below so that you can kind of go and see them if you wanted to. They will be linked in the video description below. Um, but this one was fantastic. And you can kind of see like a before uh, picture over here and an after picture. So if we look at the before pic picture, you can kind of see that all of the furniture is just sort of, you know, in a classic configuration. So it's all squared with the room, there's no angles. And then if you look at the, the after picture, it has an angled sofa over here, an angled sofa over here, an angled chair in the corner over there, and then you do have the coffee table that's angle, angled as well. And the rug is the only thing that's kind of stayed square in the room. And the reason why this works is because it opens up all the space around the room. Now, if we go back to this first slide here, you can kind of see that this is more of a square room. And it also is probably, I'm going to talk, tell you, it's probably like a, um, like a sunroom or some like secondary living room in a house because it just looks like it's, you know, not big enough to be a, a super big living room or a family room, but it is more like a sitting room or a sunroom. But um, it's probably maybe off the kitchen or kind of right off the back of the house and it's got that square look to it. With all these angles and everything like that, it really makes the room feel more open. And it actually gives you a nice focal point with, with the artwork here. So if you look down here, you do see the artwork, it's sort of behind the sofa, but when the furniture is angled, you're looking directly at the artwork on the wall. And it's one of those things that is really uh, very impressive to look at. So. The furniture grouping, so let's look at, at why this kind of works here. So the furniture group is in a classic configuration, perpendicular and symmetrical in the arrangement. So basically what that means is all of the furniture is in line with each other. And even if we turn the furniture the way that they have it turned in the room, it's still all in line with, with itself. So it's not you know, there's not one piece that's going off into a corner or one piece that's angled. Everything is angled in the room. It's all in a canted angle and that makes it really work. So you can still walk into the space. You have room to walk around the furniture. I don't know how much room there is back here, but you can still get into the furniture grouping very easily. So the second thing that they did is the attention to symmetry and balance um, has all the furniture angle as a group and that's why it works. Third thing they did is it would seem awkward if there was only one piece of furniture angle. So like if one one chair was angled and all the rest of the furniture was squared off, you know, it's probably going to be kind of kind of awkward, especially if it's like one of the sofas. If one of the sofas was angled and everything else was kind of squared off. It just would seem kind of like out of place. But because everything is turned, you can kind of see back again with this picture because everything is turned. It really works. And that is what makes this particular layout work best for it. Case number two is the case for floating seating in narrow rooms. So basically this one comes from uh, JRL Interiors 
And the reason why this one works is because they have taken something that I do a lot of times as well, and that is sectioning off your long or narrow rooms into, um, into zones. So basically you're arranging the furniture in a long skinny room using zones. They have a library zone, which is this first zone up here where you have a couple of comfortable chairs and then you have a built-in library uh, bookshelf case good over here. The media zone um, is in between and that is in between probably this, this area here, which is either a fireplace or a television mounted above a council. We have two sofas that are opposite each other couple of sofa tables behind each one of the sofas. Also, you have a shared cocktail ottoman in between, and that space is also then defined by a rug. The study zone is at the end with the secretary, a bookcase, and two occasional chairs. So basically, the secretary is um, flanked by these two occasional chairs, which are in front of these windows here. One of the occasional chairs can be get scooted in front of the secretary when you want to use it as an office space, or you can bring these chairs over into the seating group here. So what I did, uh, I made a another floor plan for this and I made it a little bit bigger so you can kind of see what I'm talking about. And we're going to talk about why this particular seating configuration works. First of all, we have two sofas that are floating, they work because they're a smaller size. They're probably either a studio size sofa or they're love seats. And that means that they measure about 72 inches or 80 inches to the maximum. And that's outside arm to outside arm. Um, or if it was a love seat, they're probably about 62 inches to 70 inches as well. Um, another thing that they do have is that they're not overstuffed, which means that they're not big rolled arms big bulky frames, they're more, they're, they're tailored. So they have skinnier arms, they have just two seats, um, and so they're a smaller scale. And then the last thing here, the way that it works is because of these two occasional chairs uh, that are over here by the secretary. So these two chairs um, can be configured near the sofas if they need to be. So for example, if you wanted to move these chairs into the seating arrangement, if you're entertaining guests and you want to have a little bit extra seating, you can move these chairs over to these positions, one here, one here, both down here. Even though they might be blocking this pathway for the time being, you would probably still have one open pathway. So if need be, you could walk into the room this way and have these two chairs that are sort of just going to be you know, kind of right next to each other here. And it would still be enough room to have a nice conversation group in this space. So that's how this would work. Case number three is the case for a long enclosed, uh, a case for large enclosed furniture in a bedroom. So as you can kind of see, this one comes from um, a blog called Home Design Inspired. And it's basically, you know, You've got these two dressers, you got an armoire over here, you've got a long chest of drawers. Marky is snoring really loud because I must be boring the heck out of her. Oh well. <laughs> um, you got these two larger uh, case goods over here that are at the foot of the bed. Um, reasons why they don't work. So the before shows you the big bulky dressers. They're angled, the armoire is angled in the corner and it's awkward, it looks very heavy, it looks very imposing. And uh, it's the only thing that's angled in the room. So as I was talking about a moment ago, when you when I was talking about the angled furniture and the first uh, design that I showed you, the way that it worked is because all the furniture was angled. Now we just have this one piece that's angled in the room and it sort of is just very awkward and bulky. So the reason why it works and the after picture is because all the pieces are white, which visually makes the room feel lighter. Also, the shelves above the chest of drawer add height and balance the room. Uh, so it balances the, the wardrobe console and the chest of drawer over here. So you have the height of the, the wardrobe over here and you have the height of the, the two shelves over here. So all of the goods and all of the uh, merchandising on top of the shelves is the same height as those wardrobe, wardrobe pieces that are over here in the corner. And then the last thing that makes it work is because they have some frosted glass on the wardrobe doors as well as the um, chest of drawer drawers and that adds a little bit of privacy it adds some reflection as well so that you don't have to necessarily be so neat behind those doors but because they have a little bit of opacity they do reflect that light that's coming from the windows you can kind of see that there's a window sort of off into this area behind the bed or next to the bed
And that just gives you some, some light reflection around the room. And I think that if you look at those two pictures, when you have bigger furniture in a bedroom, this is how you really make it work. You, you, you unify the color so that all, everything is kind of lighter. So as you notice, they didn't change the wall color in either iteration. So the wall color is the same. But what they did was they changed the finish on those case goods. They put some glass doors on them with some privacy glass or some opacity so that you don't see what's inside, but it gives you that reflection and everything is more the same. You know, it's all on the same line. So if we look at a couple of reasons why it didn't work so well is because we're looking down at this room again from above. I just did a, a little floor plan for you. You can kind of see how there were the angled um, the angled armoire in the corner, the chest of drawers over here next to the doorway, and then you have that other mysterious piece of furniture, which is probably another storage piece or something that is going to be blocking the access to this side of the bed over here. It really doesn't work. It's heavy. It's awkward. It's unbalanced. So you have maybe a closet door over here. I'm imagining this. I'm not sure if it's true or not. And you have a couple of nightstands above the, the bed over here. But even if you do have this wall, which is more of like a closet wall, you have the entry door here. And this just feels very heavy over into this corner. Now, it works because if we cut to the new layout, everything is more so concentrated on that wall, which is the entry wall. So you walk into the space here, you got plenty of room at the foot of the bed to walk around. You've got lots and lots of room to walk around over here by that window next to the bed and to access this closet over here. Works great. So you have bulky furniture, unify those finishes, make things lighter, try to make it compact so that it isn't, you know, furniture that's spread all over the whole room. Try to concentrate it in one area and that's going to be a good way to do this. Case number four is a case for dark walls in smaller bedrooms. Now, this one comes from Pufik Home and Inspirations. Hopefully I'm saying that right. It's P-U-F-I-K. Uh, looks like there is a nice little ottoman, which would be like a poof. So that's kind of probably where they, they get their name, or maybe it is their name, and they have an ottoman there, which is kind of a cool thing. But as you can kind of see, there is a lot going on here with a, um, a nice tall wall, this is a London um, Victorian house in London, England, and this one is um, really beautiful. There's a lot of dark colors. Now, why it works. The reason why this works is because you have the color that works well because it's replicated throughout the room in a monochromatic way. So basically you have all of this color. There's not a lot of other competing colors. There's, there's a 10% you know, kind of pinkish white color going on in the painting back here, but everything else in the room is sort of more monochromatic. So you have the color of the sofas and the upholstery, which matches the wall. You can hardly see it here, but there are, you know, some drapes on the wall here that are the same color as the wall as well. And then you do have a painted radiator underneath the window that is also the same color. So everything is all the same color, even including the radiator, and it makes it because it works because it's the same rep repetition of hue and color in the room and it makes the whole space feel unfussy as well. So furthermore, the designer stuck to a high contrast yet moody um, tone with the art. So there's a little bit of a higher contrast when it comes to the other pieces in the room. So you have some light colors with the artwork here. You have light colors with the, uh, with the lamp some trim that has white colors and also the lighter color of the um, the throw on the floor there or on top of the other piece of furniture there. Nothing is unnecessary, which makes it great because there's nothing in the room that is extra added that doesn't have a purpose that is kind of a filler of space. It's all going to work because everything in the space is purposeful and has a, a meaning that goes along with it in the room. Case number five is the case for furniture being placed in doorways. Now this one is my design. So basically um, I looked for a couple of other designs and I thought to myself, well, wait a second, I just did something like this not too long ago. So this happens to be a room uh, that's in an apartment building in India. And basically what happened here is it is a shared living room, dining room combination. It's a very long room. Um, so it's a nice room with lots of doorways. There's an entry door on this wall over here. 
So we kind of see that there is a dining room space up in this area here where there is a door that kind of goes out to a patio space. A couple of bedrooms off the dining room over this way. We've got a small hallway with a couple of extra rooms back here. And then you have the living room down here with a entry door. So the entry door, what you walk right into the apartment this way. So this is the long wall. So this would be where you would put the upholstered furniture in the room. So I always say that you want to put your upholstered pieces on, or the largest pieces of furniture. This, those are typically your sofa combinations with the sofa chair, a sectional, whatever is gonna be your main seating. Those are usually gonna be the longest and the biggest pieces of concentrated furniture in the room. So that's usually what goes on the longest wall in the space. And that means that this wall opposite the long wall would be your focal wall because that's where your television would be. However, as you can see here, there's an entry door where you're walking into the space. And so having a television console right there is gonna be a little bit tricky and awkward, but I'm gonna show you how to fix that right now. So why it works and what the tricky parts are. So let's start with the tricky parts over here on this side. So if we had a console that was squared off and you're walking into the space, you got to maneuver your body around it this way to get in. It feels very obstructing. You're feeling like you're walking into the side of a piece of furniture, which is never really what you want to do when you're walking into a space, if you can help it. And the way that you can kind of make that feel less awkward is to put a rounded piece of furniture, <clears throat> like a dummy loon or some sort of a half round cabinet on that entry wall. Because as you're walking into the space, you're walking in and you are not encountering something right when you're walking into the space, for example. But that rounded also, that rounded front, <coughs> excuse me, gives you a little extra space to move around the pieces of furniture as well. And that's gonna keep things from feeling too congested. Um, so, for example, a console with squared edges would be tricky to navigate around. We talked about that. But a council with a half round or demi loon shape would work great because you can walk around it easily. And that is because it doesn't obstruct the swing of the door, which is very important for the comfort and functionality of the room. So you can kind of walk into this room. There's not a long piece of furniture that's going to obstruct that swing of the door. The door can open up all the way onto that wall if you need it to be. So you have full access if you're carrying groceries in, if you're carrying bags from a trip in, things like that and you, you need that extra little bit of space to, to walk in comfortably, that's what you have here. But that rounded front is going to be the reason why you can get around furniture easier in doorways. Now you can do this in front of an entry door, you can do this in front of an interior door if you need to in, inside of a house, uh, you can do this in a hallway if you need to, that has a narrow opening to it, a narrow kind of thoroughfare or pathway into the space. So you want to be you know, very mindful of those kind of things and that's where you wanna use rounded furniture in spaces. So sometimes the rule of the this whole segment is you have to think about the shape of the furniture that you put into a smaller or trickier awkward room. And that is again with that uh, consideration for a rounded piece of furniture. Number six is the case for large scale upholstery and smaller or awkward shaped rooms. And this one comes courtesy of setting for four interiors. And that is where you can kind of see the um, the before and the after here. So basically what they had going on before is a larger sectional that's kind of pushed up against the wall over here. Um, you've got an entry door sort of over here, kind of like a foyer over that way. And what they did was they flipped the room around and they've, they've made the sectional into a, a floating configuration that is opposite a new television. So if we look at the tricky parts of this room, we're gonna show you the layout here. So here's the living room. Here's that kind of foyer vestibule area up here, the large window, the long wall. There's an angled fireplace and a kitchen island that I could see in one of the pictures that kind of juts out. I'm not sure what's going on down here, but you know, following the line of uh, the wall, there might be another opening here or it just kind of goes into this kind of kitchenette area here. Um, maybe there's a table or something like that over this way. So. The living room portion is um, square shaped. So you basically have a typical square shaped room over here. And right off the bat, it makes placing furniture, larger scale furniture, tricky in the space. So that vestibule foyer area makes things awkward because it is a small area up here. And then you have this whole space on this side, which can be confusing because you would think 
that this might be a good place to put a television cabinet. So for example, if you have that sofa section that was over here, you're looking across the room, this would be your natural focal point room. However, when you're walking into the space because the doorway is right there, you're really kind of blocking that pathway. And then you also you know, walk into this kind of island that comes out of the kitchen. That's the first obstruction. So putting something here, you've got an obstruction right in the doorway, and then you're going to have another obstruction right after that. So this isn't really the best place to put something. It's more appropriate to have it more as an open space for walking and things like that. Third thing that's happening in the room, of course, we talked about it a second ago, is that angled fireplace. Angled fireplaces are always one of those things that kind of throws people. And it is a tricky, you know, tricky thing that is hard to arrange furniture around. It's hard to make it purposeful. It hard, it's hard to make it, you know, uh, feel like it is part of the room. Um, so what we did is, here we go, why it works. So basically I just did the exact same layout that they did in the design. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. That was a great layout that they had a second ago. But I'm gonna show you again why some of these things are a little bit trickier. So. What I'm recommending and what they did here is going for a modular piece of furniture. <clears throat> and what that means is if you're gonna do a big bulky sectional, for example, in a room, you want something that's uh, soft and cushy and you wanna be able to flop on it and you wanna be able to you know, have it as the, the nice big squishy furniture that you want in the room because that's where your comfort is and that's what you want and that's fine. What I suggest doing is going for modular pieces of furniture, which means that each section of that sectional is its own particular piece. So it's not like a three seat with a return with a corner attached to it with a two seat return. You've got each one of those pieces is their own uh, their own component. And so what that does is it does two things. It allows you to reconfigure the sofa a couple of different ways. You're not stuck with one particular layout. So for example, you can flip this the opposite way. If this was flipped and it was a you know, those pieces that I was talking about before where everything is kind of like the three seat with the corner and the two seat, you wouldn't be able to flip it in this particular way because the the corner would end up down here on the, um, you know, kind, kind of cutting across this corner would, would end up down here. So that you kind of understand that part here. When you're flipping that whole thing around, that's what would happen. But because these pieces are individual, you can reconfigure them the same way sort of like the mirror opposite of what you have over here. So that's good. Number one, modular furniture. Number two, by flipping the sectional around, it creates an invisible wall that lines up with the entry wall and extends the line through the room. So that's what I mean when I say this. So this little kind of awkward vestibule up here, it opens up into this space. If we go back up here, it kind of like is this awkward area which you don't really know what to do with. So when you do flip the sectional around, and then it extends that, that line from the front doorway all the way here. So what you're doing is you're basically floating the sectional in the middle of the room. You're creating a new focal wall over here on this side, and you're, you're extending this walkway. So it doesn't have anything obstructing it. It just sort of is a natural pathway through the room, and it kind of brings you into the space where you, where you do eventually encounter this obstruction of a, um, kitchen island, but you can kind of easily get around that pretty easily. The last thing you do is the additional of the new media council positioning. So this now creates a new focal wall and it ends up kind of creating this longer sort of wall on this space over here where you have a new kind of media council in the center, a television over the top of that. And then you do have that armless chair that was over here in this position. You flipped it so that it has a wall. So when you have a, a piece of furniture that's small like this and you're floating it against something that's quite large and you have this gigantic open space behind it, it's going to get lost in that space. It's going to feel out of place. It's going to feel awkward. But when you flip it around and you make that little corner near the fireplace, the chair corner, it actually makes the room feel more cohesive and it feels more balanced and it feels um, a lot more purposeful in a conversation grouping like this. So you stick another little drink table next to it, you have a whole other seating area. So notice all of the furniture, none of them have arms on them. And that's how you can kind of fit a oversized chair or sectional in a room. Be mindful of that. If you, do, if you if that's not really your aesthetic and you wanna go for something that has a an arm to it, go for like a really skinny arm on a sectional piece um, instead of having them all open. 
but I think that this is great because it actually gives you the opportunity to bring some balance into the space and make a whole new focal point in the room so that you have a nice area to look at for the television. And there you have it. So those are six ways to overcome the I would never or would I case for breaking the small, awkward, tricky or, or um, room decorating, small, awkward, tricky <laughs> room decorating rules. Uh, so if you have a room like this, tell me about it. Let me know if any of these things would work for you. If uh, you want to go show some of these other designers some love, please click those links in the description below and go visit their sites as well. There's some really fantastic information that you can find from them as well. So thank you so much for joining me today. And until next time, we will see you for the next small, trickier, awkward room layout issue. Talk to you soon. Bye.